Welcome to another soccer down here, one v one, and actually, it's more of a two v one. So I'm uh, I'm I'm working up against a, a double team here in this particular uh, session that we're having. It's time to catch up with the director of soccer operations for Southern States FC, Nigel Bolton, and head coach Carl Reynolds because of what is now going on in the NPSO with Southern States coming online. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us for a two v one. Great, good to be here. Thank you for having us. All right, so first question, Nigel, for you, since you are the director of soccer ops, I guess just a bit of a backgrounder on Southern States FC and what you guys are doing there in Hattiesburg. Well, uh, Southern States soccer has been around here in Hattiesburg for just going on for five years now. Uh, we started from the ground up with uh, just a couple of teams, and obviously we've progressed now to uh, all ages in our academies, and our girls' academy is growing as well. Uh, we started our little kickers and our uh, recreational programs last year. Uh, the facility we have here is phenomenal. We've had some great uh, leadership behind us that have provided the financial inspiration for this. Uh, we have a, a full-size turf field with lights. We have a full-size championship grass field, Bermuda grass field with lights. Uh, we have a smaller field that we use for training, and we're currently building a third full-size field as well. We have an indoor futsal facility, and uh, we're currently in the basis of uh, putting all the structures together for the NPSL team, which is, you know, locker rooms, press box, bleachers, all that good stuff. So, Coach, when you got a phone call from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, to come be a part of something, what was your initial response? Well, I, th I think um, if you're talking about Carl yeah. as, as the coach, yeah, um, we have had a relationship as uh, coach and assistant coach, and he was an All-American player for me uh, at William Carey University, and had gone off to uh, Spain to do some work at Sport in Gijon, uh, come back to New York and was working with the Red Bulls Academy, and uh, it just happened that... Uh, that moment in time, he was looking to do something different, and this opportunity was was arriving here in Hattiesburg. So I'll let him explain to you how it unfolded. Yeah, it's. Um, I ended up moving back down here and got back involved in with a junior college for a while, and uh, um, I actually said to someone on another podcast the other day that it's it's really not very often that you get the opportunity to start something um, with your own vision. Um, Obviously, a lot of times you'll go in and um, the club is already um, whatever it is. And, and we were able to start this from the ground up based off of what our beliefs are and our philosophies. And, and that was almost too good of an opportunity to turn down. So I think we're about four years into this now. And it's it's been a roller coaster ever since we started. It's been fantastic. So, Carl, do you think of yourself as a builder? I mean, coaches have different personalities. You know, it's uh, the guy that can get you from... Uh, one level of, of competition success to that next level, you know, do you think of yourself as a builder when it comes to your own coaching personality? Uh, to, to be honest, I just think of myself as a coach. Um, I've been really fortunate to where I've been able to be involved in, in youth programs, college programs, and now obviously, um, you know, building this as well. So I, I really just feel that, you know, I'm a coach with a, with a very clear idea of the way that I like to see players develop and also the way I like to see um, teams play. Um, and I, I just kind of go through every day with those principles and those beliefs um, that, that adapt but never really waver too much. Um, and they kind of aid me in the decisions that I that I tend to make through, throughout the day, whether it be um, for the club as a whole or whether it be for particular individuals, particular teams, or so on. So I really just see myself as a coach. That's what I love to do. Building it is is obviously fantastic, and like Nigel touched on earlier, we've had some phenomenal people that have helped us a lot along the way, and we'll be forever grateful for that. Um, but but my main thing is I love to be on the field. I love to coach. Um, and, I, and I believe that that's, that's what I'll always want to do. So, Nigel, for those that don't know, uh, I mean, the, we, we mentioned the, the, the college community there in the, the Hattiesburg area and Laurel and such. For those that, don't ha that have not had the chance to be in Hattiesburg and, meet, and know what soccer means and how it's grown in southern Mississippi, describe the the I guess the, the from the fans to the participation. What is the soccer environment like there in Southern Mississippi? 
well, obviously, Harrisburg's not a big town. It's probably, I think, the uh, the greater metro area is about 150,000, but the, the city itself is probably about half of that. Um, but we have the University of Southern Mississippi there, which has the women's program. Uh, no men's program, unfortunately, but we do have William Carey University in town as well, which has both a successful men's and women's program. And then uh, there are two junior colleges that are competitive that are close to us as well. Um, so the opportunity for kids to play soccer out of Hattiesburg certainly presents itself locally as well as getting out into the, uh, the greater area around us, of the tri-state area, if you like. Um, so there's plenty of interest in soccer. The problem we have, of course, which most people will have, is it's usually a numbers game. So if we've got, uh, let's say, a 1,000 kids in the area playing youth soccer, uh, those parents will have some experience of soccer because maybe they played a little bit in high school. Most will not. Uh, whereas if you're in Atlanta, of course, you can, I don't know how many thousands of kids are playing now, but the chances are that there's a lot of the parents that have played soccer as well. So they have a better understanding and a better... Uh, connection to the game, if you will. Carl, when it comes to the NPSL, you have the history from, I believe, your time in Chattanooga at Chattanooga FC, and so you got to see what Fort Finley means to Chattanooga FC and to the fans and the Chattahooligans and the growth and, and packed houses and things like that. When it comes to what you're looking to have on the field of play, I know it won't be you know, unless you're playing inside the football stadium at Southern Miss, I mean, you won't have the fifteen or 20,000 people. But when it comes to your uh, on-the-field product and what you'd like to, to have when it comes to fan support, what are you looking for both on the field and off the field as everyone wants to go and support Southern States FC when they're out there in the NPSO? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, like you said, I was very fortunate to have, have spent my time at Chattanooga and, and the fans there and the, the entire organization, I can't say uh, enough good things about it. They were fantastic to me. Um, and, and trying to emulate that is almost nigh on impossible, you know, as, as most people would understand. Um, obviously, when it, when it comes to trying to, uh, to, uh, to attract fans to our games here, um, obviously, we, we want to show the kids a different level. Um, we always talk about next levels in training, so we want to show show the, the kids a different level of playing style, a different level of players individually from from around the country across the world. Um, we also we also want to provide entertainment away from the game as well. So we we understand that this isn't just about soccer. This is about families coming out, spending time together, enjoying their time together. And if we can provide other things on game days as well as the, the, the top level of soccer, then um, we believe that that will obviously bring more and more people out to watch our games. And then obviously, you know, people like to see their hometown win. So if we can, if we can um, supply that for them as well, then, then obviously that would be fantastic. In terms of the playing style, I think one of the one of the things that Chattanooga have done really, really well for years was they've very much been able to mix a lot of their youth program, young kids within the area with um, current uh, college players, and then also former college players, former pros, and there was a really, really good mix and balance. Um, and it was one of the things that struck me in Chattanooga compared to other places that I've played previously. Um, so obviously that's definitely something that's stuck with me and if we can kind of um, see if we can nav navigate ourselves to finding something very similar um, and finding that balance, um, I think that we could be pretty successful here. Nigel, what attracted you to the NPSL? Well, obviously you've got to look at the financial basis for this and the NPSL um, is obviously not as expensive as maybe joining the USL. And the geography of it, it just stood out that the MPSL gave us a better opportunity for games with less travel. And uh, I know a little bit about the MPSL, and I know that so, uh, a lot of the people involved in it, and it seemed like it would be a good fit for us. They were trying to do the right thing as a league, but fitted with our philosophy as a club as well. And at the same time, Carl, you know, we mentioned your time with uh, Chattanooga FC. You're going to be a part of... Uh, a conference that has the I-10 corridor locked up. I mean, it is New Orleans to Jacksonville and all points in between. What has it been like for you 
to see the sport grow in the southeast, obviously from your, your time in Chattanooga, but now being a part of something that basically has I-10 locked up over a hun- over hundreds of miles and a handful of states. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been phenomenal, to be honest, and there's been a lot of really good people that have done some fantastic work. I think um, I think the people at Chattanooga deserve a lot of credit for that. I mean, particularly when you look at, like you said, the environment that they created, um, that really pushed a lot of people to want to try and emulate that. Um, and and any time you've got people trying to emulate people that are doing good things, it's always uh, it always turns out to be positive. Um, you know, I remember my first few years at Chattanooga, we were traveling absolute miles to to get games, and now we're going to be able to go into next season and travel a couple of hours and play play a few games, you know. So the, the sport is definitely growing. Um, the, the standard's getting better from, from youth all the way up. Um, so we're just, we're just really, really excited to, to be a part of it right now. And obviously, Nigel, with no games on the pitch right now, it's a bit of a challenge for businesses who are attached to the sport and franchises who are in the sport to try to stay in the public consciousness so they're still fresh of mind when you're back out there playing. What is uh, Southern States doing in the area to make sure that you're still the, the active steward in the community that you've always been? Well, obviously, uh, we did the announcement at a press conference um, earlier this week, and now it's a case of keeping that momentum going a little bit. So we haven't actually uh, revealed the nickname of the team as yet, so that will come in the next couple of weeks. We've got a groundbreaking set for uh, sometime in July probably uh, for some of the building that's going on to get ready for MPSL. Uh, We're going to look at all kinds of community involvement, Obviously, the COVID situation, we, we have absolutely no idea when we can start uh, back up for sure and when we can start playing games. But we have to go ahead as if those games are being played anyway and uh, just make sure that we keep ourselves in the public eye. And we've done some radio interviews. We've done some advertising on TV and on uh, radio again. So we're trying as hard as we can to keep this in the public eye and we just need to find every something you know every week we need to find something that we can make uh, something of a story of and if we can build up our social media uh, avenues that will help us as well and we want to just build that excitement towards the, the, the start of the season and the kickoff in may next year nigel bolton director of soccer ops carl reynolds the head coach for southern states soccer club it is the number three s like three S's, 3ssoccer.com slash NPSL, and that's how you get all your info with what's going on. And they're hanging out with us for a 2v1 for another couple of minutes here on Soccer Down Here. And, uh, Carl, let me ask you this. I know that you want to have a specific style on the pitch when it comes to style of play, but you're also looking for a particular individual to help you represent the club as best you can. What are those boxes that you have in your on your to-do list for these are the kind of folks that I want here to be a part of this club? What kind of individual are you looking for, not just the one that can put the ball in the back of the net or keep it from getting in the net, but to be in the community? What kind of people are you looking for? Well, we're, we're very, very um, specific about the, the type of people that we like to have as a part of our organization, whether that be players or staff or whatever. Um, the, the, the biggest thing that I think um, we have going for us in the organization right now is um, people feel a real, um, they feel it personally. We have, we have some of our staff coaches and everything that see this as a family. Um, so when we, when we bring players in, we want players that, number one, want to try and push themselves to another level, that are passionate about the game, um, passionate about the, the way the game is played. Um, and we also want good people that, that want to help us promote that to the youth and the people within the area as well. Um, it, it's really not, we're not looking for people that are just coming in to aid themselves. We, we want to be able to, to help players get better and find other opportunities whilst they come in and help us build this program, build this club, um, and, and also hopefully um, become role models for some of our youth players as well. All right, uh, Nigel, what have I missed? I know we talked about the, the groundbreaking coming up, the nickname coming up, you know, and if you want to break any news during this particular 2v1, you know you certainly can when it comes to, to any, inf- any information. What else do folks need to know 
to keep an eye on everything at Southern States SC? Well, obviously, the, the nickname reveal and the groundbreaking are the two next major things. Uh, if I was to let you into the secret of what the name would be, that I'd probably uh, have a lot of people uh, very upset with me because uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've managed to keep this a secret for uh, uh, quite a while at the moment. Um, obviously, we've got to get ahead and uh, make some signings at some point. Of course, the, the COVID thing is, the, is the, uh, the game changer for everything, and who can who can decide what they're going to be doing exactly in May. We're just all hoping and praying, obviously, that uh, we'll be at a situation where we can get back to normal. And the sooner we do that, we can start uh, really approaching players and looking at what they may want to do. And, you know, that'll give us a little bit of uh, expectation as well when we start mentioning some players' names that maybe we're getting signed. Uh, we've got to put our staff together, so that'll be coming up. Uh, we're going to obviously need to start working on uh, getting some more media in terms of uh, marketing and brochures and press releases and all that good stuff. So we're just going to keep it going. We hope it'll uh, rub over onto the youth side of it as well, and the youth side of it will help promote the, uh, the MPSL team. So we see it as a seamless thing. It's not a case of one team, MPSL, and then a youth club underneath it. Uh, this needs to be one family the way it is right now, and we need to keep it going that way. And uh, that's that's the main uh, main event. Make this a community team with community involvement. And that was why we checked in. Congratulations on adding to the 94-team National League of the NPSL Southern States Soccer Club. Once again, the number 3S, soccer.com backslash NPSL will get you all the info. They're a part of everything going on on I-10, a little north of I-10, but they're a part of the, the growing footprint when it comes to soccer in the southeast. Nigel Bolton, Director of Soccer Operations at Southern States. Carl Reynolds, the head coach for the upcoming NPSL franchise. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us for a 2v1. I think I defended both of you pretty well in an odd man rush. Thanks for hanging out with us here for a 2v1 on the soccer down here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much.